Hey, welcome to Retail Secrets course review. In this video, we're going to explain to you what's included in this course and who this course is for and how it can help you with your business. In the description, we're going to have a special offer for the course. We're going to have the landing page so you can learn more. And of course, the contacts of my guest, Talon. He is the founder of Retail Empire. Basically, Taylor helps people go from online shops to retail shops, which can add a significant portion to your business. So I think it's pretty cool. And also he has a course with some other founders that they've created. And in this video, we're going to explain to you what's in the course. And the link page, again, with the best offer for the course is in the description. Hello, man. Can you introduce yourself? Welcome. Good to see you here, man. And yeah. Hi, Boba. Thanks for having me today. Uh, so yeah, let's go through what's what's the course all about. So just a quick brief about what is retail. So basically, we're talking about selling your products in the USA to brick and mortar stores, chain stores. We're talking about somewhere between 100 store companies up to 20,000 stores like Dollar General. Uh, basically, I've been working with those kind of uh, chain stores for the last 25 years. And in the last seven years or so, I'm helping vendors to bring their products to the physical stores area in the to the retail industry most of the vendors we work with are e-commerce vendors either selling on shopify or selling on amazon and you know you already have the products you have inventory you have some kind of a good branding so why not selling in retail as well and just so that you know the numbers are as follow as of 2024 the numbers are 85 percent of the market is not online in the usa i know this is surprising to some people when i say it in in you know on stages on places i'm talking people like tending to look at this and think that that can't be that's not true but it is true i've checked that over and over again 15 percent of the market goes to walmart amazon and the entire online uh, industry so you have products you have your brand you have everything you're shipping from china or india and you're doing the entire thing why don't you sell to brick and mortar stores as well and here comes uh, the thing we're talking about which is the retail secrets which is a complete course we built for over a year by Noel farrar mr aaron harbage and myself we built the course in a way that it would literally take you to a place where you can start selling the products yourself without any hassles without any issues so the course is including not only sops and recorded videos for each and every step and each and every aspect and issue of the business but it's also showing you actual samples of correspondence with buyer correspondence about catalogs all the things that is needed for the step uh, uh, of selling your products to retailers and we walked we will walk through these steps in a second but on top of all this we are also sharing a bunch of contacts buyers contacts in the main chain stores so that once you have everything ready on your side which shouldn't take that long a couple of weeks i guess if you do it properly then you would be able to right away touch base with the buyers and start corresponding about your uh, products they're going to ask samples you're going to give them pricing and so forth but you would know exactly what they're about to ask and exactly how to answer and even how to present your brand in a way that it's going to be accepted on the other side so just for that yet you know when we're talking about the main aspect of the business which is talking with buyers so buyers even if it's for Macy's, TJ Maxx, Structural Supply, Michaels, whomever it is, they are used to getting hundreds, if not thousands of different brands every month. Now, what we're teaching you in the Retail Secrets course is mainly how to make the buyer pick your brand on top of all the others and look at it. So they're not even looking at most of the brands because their brands are mispresented. People are tending to think that, okay, I'm going to send them an email. I have the somehow i found the, the the buyer's email i'm going to send them an email i'm going to present my brand and i don't see any reason why they wouldn't take it so this is false thinking because the buyers from your first email would know in seconds if you are in a place where they can work with you okay they need you to understand the retail language they need to know that you are in a place in a position with your business and brand that you can literally start working with retailers it's not uh, too hard but from the other side from the other hand it's not something that you can do without knowledge i've seen that over and over again vendors are trying themselves and then at the end of the day they're getting to some kind of a rep agent or agency that would teach them or we do it for the or, or we'll do it for them and that's where little secrets comes in place so we're going to teach you not only how to build your brand meaning if your website looks in a way it looks like we're going to walk you through all the points that you need to know about what the website should look like and there are small things that you can change them 
in a couple of hours that will make an entire you know different aspect entire different overview from the buyer side okay that's only one side of of the retail readiness and there's going to be a lot of secrets there that we're sharing like things that i to be honest with you i didn't thought i'm going to share this at any point of my career but being building a course that you really want to succeed, you want people to take it and literally start selling and seeing money from that, I realized pretty much quickly that I have to share everything, everything, everything down the road, all the secrets, all the tips, all the small angles that will make the big change. So we spoke about the website and we're also handling the packaging side of things. So you might have a good retail packaging but it might not be good for certain uh, um, certain shelves. You might have a non-retail uh, packaging, which is whatever, poly bag or it's just a plain, you know, plain box or something like that. Then we walk you through very quickly how to revise your packaging and make it in a way that it would fit the buyer when he's looking at the product and, and thinking, is this going to fit on my shelf or not? Okay. I personally was living in China for seven years, manufacturing for Walmart and for Costco. So I do understand pretty much good about how it looks like from the production side. Sometimes people trying to teach you something from the sell side of things while they are not considering what you are being through with manufacturer side. But I, it's not it's not the case with us because both me and my course partner, Aaron and Norm, we're very familiar with what's happening on the manufacturing side. Again, I was living in China for seven years, working daily with, with factories, so I know how it is. And that's on the packaging side. On the pricing side, you have to know that once you get to a stage where a buyer says, you know what, I, I would love to see pricing. Send me your catalog and pricing. Let's see what, what it looks like. If you don't know the right pricing for each and every retailer and for different types of retailers, you would fall at that stage pretty much fast. Because in general, just to share with you something, you know, helpful for you. So in general, if you look at companies that are off price, like Rose Doors, they call themselves, they used to call themselves Dress for Less. They still do, but Rose Doors, Gabe's, Bills of Florida, TJ Maxx, Home Goods, companies like that, they're selling off price. So with them, normally they would buy your product for somewhere between 30 to 35% maximum of your MSRP, which is your retail price. MSRP stands for Manufacturer Suggested Retail Price. This is the price you have on your website, on Amazon, wherever you're selling it. That's the consumer price. But for wholesale, which is talking about bulk, buying, whatever, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000 pieces of the same product, you're going to have to have a wholesale price. And you have to give them the right price for them because those kind of buyers, usually, they don't really tend to negotiate that much with you. They would negotiate if they get to the point where they see that there's something that you know is workable. If it's not workable and you offer them, for example, 50% of the MSRP, then they would just drop it off their table saying, no thanks. Now, there's a lot of different types of retailers and there are exceptions such as Costco. So Costco is a completely different thing. I'm not going to talk about it today, but just saying that this is also included in the course. How to price your product properly for each and every retailer. And it's not going to be for a thousand different of, of pricing, but it's going to be a couple of different pricing methods that would work both for you in terms of profit and for the buyer in terms of their margin and how they work. Some of them work by margin, some of them work by markup. Moving forward to what else we have in, in the course. So basically, we're talking about specific channels such as, you know, all the dot com, like office dot, uh, office depot dot com, Costco dot com, Macy's dot com. We guide you through everything through the process if you want to sell in their marketplaces, which is also very popular these days. Now, if you look at company like Kohl's, for example, with 1,200 stores, their marketplace is considered at, as the ninth biggest marketplace in the USA right now. So Amazon is number one, Walmart is number two, but there's also Costco, Home Depot, Office Depot, and Kohl's companies like that. If you approach them not knowing all the knowledge that you should know, then very quickly they would say, okay, we're going to drop this because it looks like you're not knowing what you're doing. All right. And that's why Ritual Secret comes in place. Besides that, we also have all the payment methods and all the process of working with the buyers. We've been through that in, in the course, meaning that we're going to show you how a purchase order looks like. How do you read the purchase order? How do you know when you're going to get paid? How are you going to get paid? How are you going to set up yourself as a vendor? Because when you work with companies that are having 100, 4,000, 10,000 stores, 
obviously they're not gonna, just going to send you you know quantity and price over email you're going to get an official purchase order they're going to ask for edi we're going to explain to you what is edi we're going to even give you a reference for edi companies you can choose from the cheapest and the best in the market and we walk you through how to exactly work with these buyers up to the point where your goods are on shelf and you get fully paid Okay, there's a lot of things down the road with them that you can fall with and can have, you know, issues with. And that's what we're trying to teach here to avoid all these issues. How to issue an invoice to a retailer? What should be included in the invoice? What should not be included in the issue? How to work with TV segments? We also included that. I've been working with ABC Channel at their show called Good Morning America. They have a segment called Business Stills guided by Tori Johnson, which is a famous figure in the States. And these are kind of special channels that I'm going to walk you through. I walked you, walking you through in the course. And uh, this is basically things that you would never hear anywhere. People in the market, people in the industry would never share with you things like that. We're also sharing the branding side, what your colors should look like. How do you match your colors and your patterns and your visibility in, across your website and your catalog with a connection related to the actual products? So each and every category obviously needs to have a different kind of colors, different kind of a vibe. It depends what you're selling. And we're walking through all of them in the course. We also explain how exactly to build a catalog, which is a very, very famous uh, thing ac across buyers and why the heck we need a, a catalog. So this is also explained there. But basically, once you open the few sessions we have about catalogs and you listen to them and the sessions are not long, some of them would be four or five, 10 minutes. Some of them would be 30 minutes, but we're not talking about very long sessions. We built it that way and broke it to a lot of small parts. So it will be more friendly, more easy to listen to and more fun to have it, you know, when you're driving or when you're in the office or wherever. Okay. So we're breaking all these parts of the branding side and the fundamentals of patterns and fundamentals of how to create a captivating logo and stunning website and everything. I'm just going a little bit into details, but basically you have every aspect of the business that is there. We're even talking about the logistic parts of things. We're even explaining how to approach the buyers, how to find those buyers. Where, okay, I have everything ready. My brand is amazing. I don't need any of that. You know what? I'm fully, fully retail ready. Where do I start? How do I find the buyers? We explain those things. We're giving you all the secrets that I was using myself still am using it every day in my own business and this is really priceless because you will not hear it anywhere nobody wants to tell you where the gold is they want to sell you the gold they want to show you the gold they don't want to tell you how to find it yourself that's the exact opposite thing that we're doing here we are showing you how to find the gold uh, step by step and it's not it's not a big hassle to find buyers it's just people just don't know how to do it we're also talking about advanced things like teaser deck which is a different form of catalog teaser deck is in place when you're already in relationship with the buyer and you want to take it to the next step and show them how your products is going to look are going to look in their stores we're talking about rendering but not only there's also a couple of different points inside so non farrar who is inside this thing with us inside the course he's an expert when it comes to both branding and packaging and all the patterns and he's bringing like knowledge that with all the years that i've been in the market i've never heard things like he said and i was learning myself during the course from him which is amazing one more thing that we're teaching there and i just spoke about you know some parts of the course not all of them you can all always go to the link that vova is sharing here and explore this further and see more details and see more you know into depth but one more very important thing we're sharing is the outreach so you have the buyers you have their contact you have their emails so how are you going to approach them is it going to be like phone call a cold call a hot call is it going to be a message is it going to be a text message an email and if it's an email how are you going to make it to approach not 10 or 15 of them but let's say 100 buyers a day let's say 10,000 buyers a day how can you approach them without being marked as a spammer right you want to know the fundamentals of outreach which is things that we are dealing with for the last i think almost six years and i've been through all the softwares in the market tested literally all of them well maybe not all of them but you know most of them and for sure the biggest and famous ones and i know exactly what in terms of money per result money per value is the best method to use and the best softwares and best 
methods to use. So we are explaining those parts as well. We're going deep down to the DNS issues, DMARC issues, SPF, things that are very, very advanced. And you know what? Sometimes as a business owner, you want to learn some of it. Some of it you want to just roll back to your team and they would handle it. That's fine as well. I've seen people doing it and it's cool. It's no problem. So yeah, <laughs> this is it. Yeah, in Thank you for uh, sharing. Again, we're going to have the link in the description to the course with a special offer for people to you know, learn more and understand what's exactly included. It's all kind of broken into modules there and people can get more information. I wanted to ask a few questions, man, like a little FAQ. Uh, first, can do that. Like, for example, is there a minimum revenue for the brand that wants to go retail or minimum amount of products or... So basically, every brand that has a couple of SKUs, let's say five SKUs as a minimum, can do that. But just as an exception, if you have one SKU, and I've been doing that with other brands, with a few brands, if you have one SKU, but it's a unique one, either because of the design or its patent product, then one SKU would be enough because you have something unique in your hands. But basically, five to 10 SKUs, that would be a good start before you reach out to buyers and to the retail industry. In terms of the revenue, it's really not a big deal because they go with you step by step. So, for example, if you're getting a first order from TJ Maxx, normally they would give you between five to 600 units per SKU to test you. Once they tested it, which is not a big deal in terms of, you know, financing, once they test it, they go back saying, listen, it went good in the stores. Now we want to order big numbers. How much can you do in terms of capacity? They would ask you what capacity you can handle right? Because they know that not all the vendors could handle any capacity. That's why they asked this question. As far as they're concerned, although they have only 4,000 plus stores, they are selling in terms of revenue yearly, they are selling pretty much more than the biggest retailers in the state, such as CVS and Dollar Tree. That's how it is. It's just that that's how it is. And, and anyway, they're asking you like, what's your quantities? And it's almost the same thing with other retailers. There's always negotiation. The good thing about retail is that it's kind of an old school type of business where you have communication. It's not forms. It's not seller central. It's not talking to robots or anything like that. You talk to real people. You can always go on a Zoom call and say, listen, I can get you to whatever, 1500 pieces per dot SKU, 3000 pieces on that SKU. Is that, does it work for you? And then you find the right way for both of you. And then even the payment terms are something that is negotiable. Okay, but people wouldn't know that if I wouldn't say that. People tend to think, oh, they gave me those payment terms. It doesn't fit me. That's it. Let's quit. No, there's always a solution. And the solution is there in the little secrets. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, man. Again, so I'm going to have the landing page in the uh, description. So I have another question, man. In terms of costs, not the cost of the course that's all in the for link people can check, but the cost of actually doing that operation to go from online to retail, how, how much would it cost like all this process or hmm. does it cost anything? It does cost. Roughly, we're talking about a couple of hundreds of dollars because you're going to need a catalog. So if you can craft the catalog properly in-house or yourself, you don't need that cost. If you want to craft it outside with a professional, it's going to cost probably one or two thousand K. If you craft it the way we recommend, it's going to cost you between two and three hundred dollars. We also recommend who are the people that you should approach with that retail catalog. That's one thing to use. Packaging, it depends. If you have a retail packaging, fine, no problem. If you want to pitch it, it's just a pitch. If you don't have it all, then obviously it depends in your product. If you're selling a refrigerator, or a small product like USB product, then it's a different kind of cost in the packaging area. So I don't want to say something that is misleading, uh, but we're talking really small expenses in terms of, you know, rearranging everything in a way that it would fit retail. The most important thing, which is not a cost, is knowing the language of retail and what to expect and how to present your brand. That's the big deal about it. So talking about pricing as well, I know you didn't ask that, but basically this course costs $1,999, but there is a deal with you, for you, for your audience, Vova, which is 50% off. It's $999. The code is going to be included, I think, uh, in the description. It's half price. It's for limited time. I don't know for how long. It's not my area in the business, in the course, but it exists for now. 
and it's specifically made for your audience worldwide. Yeah, I appreciate that a lot, man. And uh, we're going to have it updated with time in the description. So in case any price changes occur, we're going to include it there. And thank you for the generous uh, discount. That's 50% off is awesome, man. Yeah, so thank you for that. And I also wanted to ask you, Taro, like, is there any type of seller or type of product that would not fit retail like maybe someone's listening like okay sounds cool maybe i have a few SKUs, one two five ten fifty maybe and they're like i want to start i want to check it out but can we in advance explain to like who can go retail who cannot what type of product maybe there's specific types of product which is just it's not for them at all or maybe a specific type of seller or something like that what do you think Right. So, I mean, I was doing all kinds of categories during the years. I have never done food. I mean, it's it should be the same. I just didn't had a chance to do food, so I don't know. The only category that I've seen issues with was categories that are floated in the market. I'll give you an example. If you're going to go and try to sell, how do you call them? Those gloves, you know, gloves that we've seen in, in COVID time. If you're going to try to sell those kind of gloves or you're going to try to sell sanitizers these days, you're not going to be probably able to sell anything because the market is not only floated, there are tons of excess inventory in different warehouses across the US and people are trying to get rid of it for rid of it for, for no money. But apart from those you know, special areas, I would say that every, every category could be a hit. You know, I used to think that puzzles might be a hard category because the nature of a lot of vendors using it. But as you can see right here behind me, this is a puzzle company. I used to work with them and they're doing very good in retail, although they are, they're selling something that other people are selling. And I think that they are doing better or good in the retail, uh, better than others for sure, because of their branding and the way they serve the brand to the buyers that's something the very like it, it's a very big key in terms of success in retail yeah i understand man thank you for explaining that so yeah i'm gonna have the link in the description to the course with a special offer and uh, would love to ask you man if that's possible basically is it for any country as well like if someone's outside of the u.s like can they still do retail in u.s uh, or yeah, most, do they need any most of yeah, most of the vendors that I've seen and that we are working with, most of them are not in the U.S. It's easier when you have a U.S. company. I would say that, but it's not a must. Very, very few companies force you to be a U.S. company before you start selling with them. By the way, Walmart used to have that criteria. They don't have it anymore. They also work with every vendor from everywhere in the world. But basically, yes, you need to have inventory and activity in the States. If you don't have yet, then it would be possible but pretty much harder because of samples and the way they are going to be shipped if they're shipped from overseas it's going to take more time they're going to see that it's coming from wherever you're living at it's going to be a question but basically your company or yourself as an organization you don't need to be in the states i myself work with the u.s market for as i mentioned almost 25 years and i've not been living in the states during those years so awesome man thank you for explaining uh, so i guess my, maybe the last question was something else jumps to my head like is there mentorship in the course so is there an option to get help from you from aaron or from norm or how does it work with this part yes you can always approach each and one of us and ask questions no problem but we also have on top of the course we have a weekly mastermind where we meet for one hour every week and we discuss every week different topic again into depth into more depth in the retail business and those meetings are this is our retail secret mastermind and in those meetings we're also sharing again more contacts of buyers and we're sharing more details and more tips some of them are q a sessions of an hour some of them are most of them are including q a at the end of each and every session and those are weekly meetings as i mentioned and this costs 199 dollars a month which is not that big so if people are, you know, hesitating before the course, not sure about the cost, not sure what they're going to get, they can always jump right through the mastermind, look how it how it looks like, see how it is, see how it feels, see the, the, the tons of information that is served there. And I believe that they would understand very quickly after even one session that, you know, the course is really priceless. So, yeah. 
it's man. So we're gonna have the mastermind included in the uh, description as well. Pretty clear to me, man. Is there anything else I should have asked you that I have not, or something you'd like to mention that we have not spoken about? Seems like we covered what's inside. You got into details, like for like even small things, like when we're sending mass emails, like how not to get you know the spam mark, right? And so you go into each little part in the course, and that's pretty awesome. Of course, how to follow the process from A to Z, how to take a product to retail, and yeah. uh, so that's pretty awesome. We talked about the price. So it's one nine nine nine. With a special discount is going to be only nine nine nine. So it's in the description. Unless things change, so we're going to have it change in the description. So it's good to kind of check it out if the video, like you know, maybe two three years from now if you're watching. But aside of that, man, anything else maybe that you'd like to mention? Nothing that I could think of. But always, you know, if people have questions, you can always ask them in the comments, and I would from time to time pay a visit there and see if there's any questions left there. I would be happy to answer. Yeah, I'll take care of uh, checking it out, man. So you don't have to, if, if, if there's any uh, comment I get, there's a notification on YouTube. So I'll ask you or answer myself. So again, in the description, we have the link to the Retail Secrets course. It helps you take your brand to retail stores across the United States, which I think is pretty cool. It's more visibility. Myself, I'm you know, for now only an online seller, but with time, we might take our products to retail as well. So I think it's, there's, and as you mentioned, Taylor, it's like most of the sales actually happen in not online. So there's a big portion happening online and it's like a lot, a lot of money and all that, but there's still way more uh, outside of the online world. So it's pretty good. So it's all in the description. Thank you, everyone watching. Taylor, thank you for your time today. Thank you for explaining to us what's included in the course that you've created. Thank you for taking the time to do that product for people to actually, you know, to ease their way into retail. And uh, yeah, man, have a great day to the viewers, our listeners. Thank you very much as well. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah. Thanks for having me. Have a good one. Thank you.